Welcome to this week's edition of Trade the Trend, a weekly video discussing where the stock market is going. This video is going to focus on the S&P 500, over the ASX 200, as well as copper, gold, oil, and uranium in a separate video. I'll leave a link for that in the description section below. As always, everything today is general commentary only. It doesn't take your personal situation into account. With all of that said, let's get into our first chart. So we're going to begin with the S&P 500. And this has been, this has been a, a fairly encouraging week in that the S&P 500, if you remember back last Friday, closed uh, pretty much down on its lows near the 100-day um, the moving average. This week, we've seen a bounce off that 100-day moving average uh, back up towards the 50-day the average. And I also like that Thursday's price action. So just looking at, at Thursday. So I'm filming this on Friday, Friday around midday in Sydney. So I don't have Friday's action for the US market yet. But looking at Thursday's action, market opened low, traded lower, and then closed up near as high. So I think that's I think that's encouraging. And I don't I don't think that signals the end of end of this pullback phase, but what it does think and indicate, I think that indicates there is some interest in buying the dip down here. I think this overall pullback consolidation, I think it needs time to play out, but it is encouraging. We are getting a getting a, a, a rally off the 100-day moving average. Last week we were talking about how the S&P 500 had had come back to this 50-day moving average, crossed below it for the for the first time since November. So broke above the 50-day moving average back in November, had this nice strong run, and just, um, just recently we've dipped back back below the 50-day the moving average. So that's, that's around five months, five months above the moving average. So just putting some perspective around this, because I think it's really interesting. It's, it's actually the 10th longest run. This is the 10th longest run or stretch above the 50-day moving average since 1950. So just think about that. In 74 years, this last five month period we've had has been one of the, the best ever. So what does that mean going forward? And I think a lot of people would, would hear that statistic and I think it would make a lot of people worry. They'd think, look, a record run, record run is going to lead to an imminent crash. It's often the way way people tend to think. But that's not how this is this has played out in the in the past, because strong price action typically leads to further gains. That's how trends work. When you're in a strong upward trending phase, that upward trending phase can persist for, for quite a while. And, uh, and that's how this has worked out in the past. So of course, there are going to be corrections along the way. And of course, at some point, a trend will ultimately end. But when the path of least resistance is up, and this is the situation the market has been in for, for a few months now, when the path of least resistance is up, we should be open to further upside and not constantly looking for, for something to go wrong which is often the way that we're, we're wired to, to think with markets. When things are going well, people start to look for, well, what's going to break? Why is this good period going to come to an end? It's also interesting that when I look at the data, so I've gone and I've looked at some data for, for previous, these previous periods where you've got these, got these, uh, these record-breaking runs. And when you look at the six months after one of these one of these stretches ends, so the, the stretch has just recently recently ended, and I've looked at previous previous periods. I've seen data of previous periods where the when the run ends, what does the market look like in six months' time? Well, the worst result. So I'm, I looked at the top fourteen. I've, I've seen data for the top fourteen stretches above the fifty day moving average since nineteen fifty and excluding this one because we, we can't see six months into the future, of course. So looking at the top 14, the worst result was uh, a loss of 12% in six months' time. There, were, there was also there was a 9% negative result and a 3% negative 
negative result in, in six months' time. But the other 11 periods were positive. They ranged from 1% to 23%. Median, the median or the middle positive result was up 7%. And that's after uh, a long stretch of trading above the 50-day moving average, coming back, the, the run severed. There's been some consolidation, but when you look six months forward, the median result was a was a 7% gain. So I think this period, this period is going to have its own unique outcome. It's a case, I think, of I think it's a case, as it always is, I think it's a case of really assessing and responding to the price action as it unfolds. And uh, letting this consolidation play itself out and assess that price action as we get it in the um, in the weeks to come. Now, if you're getting some value from this, please hit that like button. Please leave us your comment. Yes, hey, thanks for the video. Just tells YouTube you're watching. YouTube shows other people. It helps me heaps when you do that. So, so please do that and click that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Now, just an interesting side note on, on pullbacks. Another pullback of, of note and interest has been NVIDIA. Now, if you're a regular viewer, you may remember us talking about NVIDIA in mid-March. It, right uh, it was right around the 15th of March, actually. Went back and looked at when it was. So it was the 15th of March, right in, this, right in this period here. What I said at the time was that rarely had we had it, had it uh, NVIDIA been this stretched above its moving averages or above its 50-day or above its 100-day rarely had it come as stretched as it was in in mid-March. And I said that gravity always prevails after extreme periods and that a retest of the moving averages seemed like an inevitability. And sure enough, that's what we've seen. We've seen NVIDIA come back, hit that 50-day moving average and, and trade below it uh, last week. Last week was the uh, First time it had done that since um, you know, back here in January. Now, the point of revisiting this isn't to say, look, I got it right. I say plenty of things that don't happen. That's not the point of all point at all. Good analysis is all about identifying possibilities and then managing risk, not predicting the future. So that's all I do when I when I point these things out. I'm assessing the possibilities of like, oh, what's the likelihood that this continues to stretch above its moving averages? When we looked at the past, well, we could see that it only goes so far and then the band snaps back and pulls back to the averages. And the point of coming back and looking at this is to, to demonstrate the, the risk of chasing stocks that run hard. And this goes for markets as well, whether it be, you know, the, the gold market is currently an interesting one. It's like any market which has run hard, I think, that I think it's always a case of being patient, waiting for the right setups, making sure the potential for reward is a multiple of the risk that we need to take to put a, put a position on. And FOMO, not letting FOMO get you into a market after a strong trending phase. So try, time to buy stocks or, or markets like gold or whatever it may be, it's when they're breaking higher often after periods of consolidation when they're rallying off their moving averages, not when they've run and they've become stretched. That's when the FOMO crowd get, get out there, but that's when I think it's best to, that's where we be patient. Don't get, don't get swept up in it. Just quickly, I want to have a quick look at the, the Russell, the small caps. Uh, they've lost their bullish, bullish setup for now. It's this pullback, this pullback we've seen from the high, uh, back below the top of the, uh, this, this resistance band we've been watching, we got above it, come back, come back below it, back within the range. I think that, I think this is going to likely need some time to consolidate and, and rebuild. And uh, I, I just don't think that now is the case that we need to do a great deal with this. I think it's a case now of just watching the price action, see how it develops. I don't think there's a hurry to, to do a lot at the moment bit of technical damage done with this, this decline. And as I say, I think it takes time to reestablish a base before we can look at that upward momentum. And overall across the stock markets generally, I think the, the, same, the same idea applies and I'm happy to play, I'm happy to play this defensively. 
really until we see, see broad stability across the, um, the market. So I don't think there's a rush to be, be running in and doing a great deal just at the moment. So look, let's leave that there for this week. Hopefully that's been interesting. Please give me that like. And uh, yeah, I look forward to coming back, doing it all again with you next week. Until then, bye for now.